Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. If it's your first time watching, thanks for joining us. And if you're already a channel subscriber, welcome back. So today I've been busy installing an electric vehicle charging point. A customer of mine has bought a secondhand Nissan Leaf and they wanted a charging point installing in their garden, in the driveway. So what I've done is fitted a Rolex electric vehicle charging point and I just wanted to show you the job and uh, walk you through it and show you how it went. As always guys if you enjoy this video smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great videos coming soon. So here's the job. This is where they want the charging point located just on the wall right here and it's just hidden behind out of view from the driveway there so it's a nice convenient location. I'm going to run the cable through the wall here, the consumer unit's on the other side, not too far away, about 3-4 metres away. And then I'm going to just drill through the wall, run the cable along up to the charging point. Just managed to squeeze my van in there. Here is the consumer unit, so it's nice, uh, new, fairly new Hager dual RCD board which has been put in and they've left lots of spare ways, yes, win. So uh, that was really nice to see. And I'm going to use this spare way here just behind the main switch and run a new circuit in for it. Now you can see here, this is the main incomer and it's a TNS system, which uh, under the regulations for electric vehicle charging points, we have to therefore presume that it could be changed to a PME at some point. So I have to put a earth stake in for the charging point. And here is the bonding to the gas. And here is the bonding to the water. Neither of which are within 900 mil of the stopcocks, but um, you know, they're there and securely bonded. So I'm happy with that. So basically from the consumer unit, I'm gonna run the cable along the wall here. Just clip the steel wire armored along, drill through the wall, and it's basically straight through the wall. On the other side, you see the pipes coming out. So it's easy to figure out where to pop through the wall. Um, so yeah, there's the waste pipe and the ventilation. And I've got to put an earth stake in. So I had to go here. Um, but I'm struggling a bit because it seems like I've hit something. So this is a bit of a tricky one. So what I thought I'd do, drill down and just see, yep, yeah, I'm hitting something here. So there's something in the way. So I try drilling in a different spot. And yes, win. Straight away we're able to get down. Uh, it's an easy way to do it rather than hammering in a, a earth rod because you get more of a feel for what's going on and I'm always scared of hammering through a buried cable or hammering through a um, drain drainage pipe or something like that, a sewage runoff pipe. So the way of drilling down just helps you to get a feel for what's under there and if you hit something you'll notice it quite quickly and be able to just find a new spot. So here I'm just hammering in the earth stake in the same hole that I just pre-drilled. So now the drill is slightly shorter than the earth stake. So it means the last little sort of 20 centimeters um, is hammering just into fresh soil. So get a nice tight uh, fit into the soil because obviously we want it to be as compact as possible around the earth stake to get a good reading. So I'm just going to hammer this down and then I'm going to clear the gravel around it and hammer a bit more, try and get it as low as possible. So I've got it as low as possible here with the hammer now and I'm just going to clear this gravel away. Excuse my use of my improvised trowel. Um, I need to get myself a trowel to keep on the van. So I just used a little um, pallet knife. So just scraping away the soil as much as possible around it then you can get another few inches on it and that can make a big difference to the resistance actually you know you can get several ohms uh, lower resistance just by you know getting down a few more inches 
So it's worth to do. Some people even dig down like a foot with a spade and then you know, get it really low and then put the connection on the end like that. Here I just wanted to bury it you know, just a few inches below the gravel so that it's accessible for future if needed because technically the connection to it is not maintenance free so it needs to be accessible. So just digging out as much of this as I could, making enough space because I've got one of these earth rod boxes to go on the top of it. I don't know if you've seen them, but it's basically like a plastic box where you put the clamp in and you put the all the connections inside and it's got a label on the lid that says safety earth electrical connection do not remove so it provides your uh, needs for your labeling as well because um, some people just put a bonding clamp on them but that's not really the correct way to connect an earth rod you, use, you need to use the correct clamp which is supplied by the manufacturers so last little bit of hammering and scraping and we're gonna put the connection on now it's quite close to the wall so that's handy so I can just dig the cable across to the wall here it is so this is the box supplied by the wholesaler and it's got a little gland in the side, compression gland, so you can bring the cable in from the side. The earth rod fits in through the hole at the bottom. And then you can clamp the earth cable onto the earth rod using a special clamp that is provided. It needs to be nice and tightly connected so that it's not going to move. And you need to make sure you've got a good secure connection for the copper to the earth rod. So I'm just using my spanner here to crank that up. Try and get it as tight as possible. And that's about as good as I could get. So then that's clamped on nice and solid, that's not going anywhere. And then we can just put the lid on and tighten up that compression gland and then we're good to go. So here it is with the lid on, it's a safety earth electrical connection, do not remove, it's just safety electrical connection actually. And then I've just run the cable to the wall. What I'm going to do is run it in black PVC conduit so that it looks nice rather than clipping a horrible green yellow cable along the wall. So moment of truth now, drilling through from this side to the inside. Uh, I decided to do it this way rather than from the inside out because um, it's easier to do it this way in the end. And the other side's going to be hidden behind a washing machine so it doesn't matter too much where it comes out but I calculated it quite well where it would come out so um, I've got these brilliant long drill bits I don't know if anyone else uses them put down in your comments if you use these long drill bits but they come in handy so often I've got a thin one that you can use to pull like 2.5 or 1.5 twin and earth through walls and then I've got a thicker one that's 20 mil I think which is really useful for steel wire armoured so I just did this pilot hole with the thin one I think it's 10 mil and then I checked that it was coming out at the right place. And then once I'm sure that it's come out in the right place, I just follow through with the larger drill just to expand the hole. So that's a great way of, of doing it without drilling whacking great holes through the wall. And I always find that that's the best way to do it. Drill a pilot hole first and then just enlarge it with the larger drill bit. So that's my whole drill through, so uh, it came out just in the right place, so now I'm going to run the steel wire armoured through the hole, and just poking it through from this side, give enough to grab on at the other side, and here we are, through, and uh, I just managed to miss that pipe. As you can see, the pilot hole came through a little bit too far to the right, so I decided to angle it a bit more when I did the other hole, and that worked out perfect. 
and I brought it out just at the right height that I could clip it basically in a straight line straight across to the consumer unit and pop into the side just at the bottom of the consumer unit there. Bring enough slack through to make sure you've got plenty on this side and then I just drilled my fixing holes for my cleats. Pop the raw plugs in and then just cleat it up on this side. Not all the way, but just enough. And I put a metal cleat on there as well for the regulations to avoid premature collapse in the event of a fire. It's just one of those metal conduit clips basically, but it did the trick. So here we are at the consumer unit and I'm going to just run it in the corner here and then run the cables along behind the MCBs and up into the various terminals. So I think that should work quite nicely. And I've got these nice metal drill hole cutters that I use uh, which are perfect for drilling through sheet metal like this. They pop through an absolute treat. This one's by Arm Egg and I'll show you how it works. So as you can see really quick and easy and it's got a little spring on it so that when you get through it's easy to actually take the little metal plug out of the drill without having to prise it away too much um, so a little flick of a screwdriver and that'll pop right off and they cut a really nice neat hole these things uh, very little burrs or anything like that compared to the old star rip ones that we used to use they're much, much better. So I only use these hole cutters now. I've got various sizes, 20 mil, 25 mil, 32 mil. Those are the sizes I use. So terminated the armoured, and I used the CK armor slice tool. Uh, I've got to say, I struggled with it a little bit, to be honest, to get a neat cut on the actual armoring. So I think I need to practice a bit more. I'm using these earthing nuts. And these are just brilliant because they clamp really nicely onto the metal and they give you a good solid contact with the metal casing. So I'm going to pop this spare um, blank out now and then I've got a Hager MCB to go in. And the way these work is I've got a little tab at the bottom that you just flick down and that enables you to clip it onto the DIN rail. But the really nice thing about these Hager ones is that it goes down so far that you can actually fit it in an existing assembly without having to remove the bus bar from underneath and take all the other um, MCBs out from the bus bar and then put the bus bar back in. It literally just slots in so easily like that, which is fantastic. So then you just flick that little clip up at the back and that clamps it back in place. Sorry for the dodgy footage. There we go, that's nice and secure there. Actually needed clipping up a little bit more. But it's so easy to fit these uh, in a situation where, for example, you can't turn all the power off to the whole building, maybe in a commercial setting. It's just, you know, too risky for the customer to do that. So you can just flick it in without having to remove the whole buzz bar. And here I am using my torque screwdriver for the first time in real life. And it worked a treat using the Hager torque settings that were recommended on their website. And managed to um, get the terminals tightened just the right amount, which I was very pleased about. I'm loving this set actually. It's really, um, really practical to have this. So then I've got my earth connections in there, what the earth wire within the cable, and then also a earth tag to go to the lock nut to earth the sheath of the cable as well, just a belt and braces type thing. And the armor just clipped along the wall there going through. And I've clipped it up on the other side here, ready to pop up into the charging point. Then here I've put my PVC conduit clips in place. So I'm going to come up the wall, 90 degree angle, along another 90 around the corner, then another 90 and run it up the wall. Now the regulations say that the electric vehicle charging socket should be with it between 750 and 120 mil um, in height from the 
floor. So I decided to put about 100. Um, sorry, not even, no, um, centimeters. So 750 and a thousand mil, or 75 and a, oh, 120 centimeters. I just livened it up briefly to test the cable to make sure that everything was okay. So I did a ZS on the cable, but because I put the um, vehicle, the uh, earth stake in, so I've got 32 ohms on my earth stake reading, which was great. And then I also did a ZS on the actual um, earth within the cable as well just to check to make sure that I had a good earth reading within the cable. And what I'll do within the charging point, yeah, so that's 0 0.22, that's the direct back to the TNS earthing system. And the 32 ohms was the earth stake, which you'll see here again. So I have to keep these two separate within the box. So essentially the TNS system is protecting the cable. So if someone nails through the cable or something like that, it will trip um, based on the earth within the cable, but the charging socket itself, which earths the vehicle, is earthed from the TT system that I've put in from the earth stake, and these two are kept separate within the actual charging socket. So I needed to do a few things here. I needed to recommend that the customer gets the main fuse upgraded and also get the smart meter fit in ideally. Um, had a little bit of an issue with Rolex because the lead time on their charging points was quite long. So I had to come back a couple of days later to actually fit the charging point. And here it is. So I've got my six mil SWA coming in, the live and neutral coming in the top there into the RCD, and then my 10 mil earth for my earth stake coming through and into the main earth terminal there to earth the whole thing. And rather than putting an armoured gland, because I didn't want any contact between the sheath and the outside earth, I put just a normal 25mm compression gland in. But I did secure the TNS earth within the socket so it can be accessed for testing. And here's the earth cable for the um, earth stake within the conduit, all neatly clipped around. So um, that you know, looks much smarter than just clipping it to the wall and everything connected and in place. So let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great videos coming soon.